Good morning and welcome everyone. Thank you for connecting to today's class. Let's pray and uh, uh, go ahead with our study of Hebrews chapter 11. Um, let's, let's have someone pray, please. Jesus' name. Yes, yes. Brother, um, yeah, I'm sorry. Father. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you this morning for the gift of life. Thank you because you are the God Almighty, the God of all flesh. Behold, there is no one like you. Father, I will commit our lecture and our pastor and the rest of us too, my colleagues, into your hands. Please strengthen us and give us that good power to know your word. Oh Lord, may you be doers of your word and not only hear us alone in the name of Jesus. Mm. Thank you because you are a wonderful God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Success. Um, we'll go ahead with our study of chapter 11. Yesterday we saw the lives of a few people and we understood that they were all people who lived by faith and which is what made their lives exemplary that God spoke about them in this hall of uh, fame or hall of faith as it is called. We looked at the life of Abel, Enoch, Noah, uh, then Abraham and Sarah. Uh, we, we also saw that there is a process that uh, people followed to see victory in their lives. Uh, and that is firstly to receive God's promises, to be assured of them and embrace them. That's when you know they actually uh, walk into what God has intended for them. Now let's move on. We will start from verse 17. Uh, let's first read verses 17 to 19, and then we will go further. Could someone please uh, read this section? Yes, please. Hebrews chapter 11, verses uh, 17 to 19. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac your seed shall be called, concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense. Thank you. Um, a little more about Abraham here. We've already seen that his life is a great example of one who lived by faith. He trusted God for a land of promise for himself as well as his descendants. Um, but here there's a different incident that is reported and we can learn once again from Abraham's life. It says that uh, during the test that Abraham had, and we, we are aware of that test, that uh, God had um, asked him to sacrifice the only child that he obtained by promise, which was who was Isaac. And Abraham responded by faith. Uh, and he went ahead and offered up this child whom he received after you know, such a long time. Uh, and we notice that there was a faith that Abraham carried in his heart. So verse 19, concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from which he also received him as a figurative sense. So uh, Abraham carried revelation that God was a God of power. So we now know uh, that our God, when Jesus spoke in uh, uh, John 11, 25, uh, he says, I'm the resurrection and the life. So we now know, people of the new covenant, we know that our God is a God of resurrection. But think about this. Way back, Abraham 
was such a friend of God, the way he walked with God, he carried revelation that God is faithful to his word. God had promised Abraham many blessings through his descendants. And he knew that Isaac is uh, that path through Isaac. You know, God is going to give him many descendants and all the promises of God will be fulfilled. And imagine, you know, when God is calling to sacrifice that Isaac, what may have gone through Abraham's mind. But he knew God so closely and had such great faith in God, he carried the revelation that God was even able to raise Isaac from the dead. Now, if Abraham uh, went ahead and sacrificed Isaac, we know that's not what happened. God stopped him. But even if that were to happen, the faith of Abraham in God was so strong that he believed that God was able to raise up Isaac from the dead. And, uh, you know, that uh, again is such a blessing that uh, Abraham continues to, to be that man of faith. Okay. And an example for all of us. Uh, so, in our circumstances, in the tests that we go through, who do we believe God to be? Do we believe in our test? Do we believe that God is still faithful? God is still powerful. He can work all things together for good to me because I love the Lord. I'm called according to his purposes. Uh, so that revelation of God that we carry matters a lot. And the faith that we carry in the Lord matters uh, a lot. Let's uh, continue. Let's look at other people now. Verse 20. I'll read it because it's just like one one line. It says, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. So even in order to be able to bless his children, uh, Isaac needed faith is what we are told. So speaking blessings on his descendants uh, was an act of faith. If it was not, then it wouldn't be recorded here. But God is commending it and appreciating the faith of Isaac as he brought the blessings upon his children and uh, therefore the descendants. And something unique that happened uh, is that, you know, the blessings were in such a way that you know, it, it was really from the heart of God. Though Esau was first, he was the firstborn, we understand that he sold his birthright. And so technically, the blessings of the firstborn uh, needed to come upon Jacob. And it happened like that. Uh, of course, there's another story attached to it, which is uh, the wrong that Jacob did by cheating his brother. Uh, but, you know, whatever the case, the blessings went the way God intended. Uh, and so the blessing of Isaac, was by faith and uh, he spoke as it were in the heart of God giving the blessings of the firstborn to Jacob uh, or whom God called as Israel. Moving on verse 21 it says by faith Jacob when he was dying blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshipped leaning on the top of his stuff. So speaking about Jacob and his blessings, uh, and, and again, you know, the, the fact that blessing their descendants was an act of faith, which they did. And, uh, you know, a minor detail given there is leaning on top of the staff. Uh, and some commentators refer to what ha the uh, encounter that Jacob had with God in Genesis 32, when he developed that limp and he needed a staff to hold on to. So that is the reason why leaning on top of the staff there is mentioned. But in essence, the blessing that he pronounced was through faith. That, that's what we understand. Now, verse 22, Joseph. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones. So this is also somewhat unusual. I mean, think about this. These men had great faith in God that he would fulfill what he had promised to their fathers. So these are the promises made to Abraham. And Joseph knew that they were living in the times uh, where the Israelites were in bondage under the Egyptians. And there was a certain time limit for that. 
after which would be the deliverance of the Israelites. So Joseph, way before the Israelites are delivered, you know, he is instructing the children and he's telling them, you know, you need to uh, take my bones, you need to bury me in, in such and such a place. So if he did not have faith that God will deliver the people, you know, God will bring them out of Egypt into the promised land, Joseph would never have said that. But because he carried faith about the future, uh, he is speaking you know, by the Spirit of God, and he says, yes, you will be able to do it, and these are my instructions regarding my bones. So that is the faith of Joseph. Now, we could ask the question, didn't these people have faith in other aspects? Uh, of course, they had faith in other aspects. For whatever reason, God has chosen certain incidents to be mentioned in this particular chapter. Let's move on to the life of Moses next. So verse 23, it says, by faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. So in a season where um, there was a decree to kill young children, Moses also would have fallen uh, prey to that. But Moses' parents, you know, they had faith in God that this child would continue to live and so they uh, came up with a, a scheme and you know they helped Moses escape that slaughter and that's what we are talking about we're talking about the faith of his parents and how that actually opened the door for Moses to fulfill his destiny now verse 24 is again about Moses. It says, by faith Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. So it's talking about the stand that Moses took. When Moses understood that he was a Hebrew child and he did not really belong to the Egyptians, he took a stand, you know, and refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. So uh, he sided, you know, uh, uh, with, with his own people and it takes courage. So how can we apply this in our, in our time? It's something like, you know, we are secure in our identity in Christ and uh, we are not afraid to be called as uh, a child of God. We are not afraid to be called as uh, somebody who is born again or a Christian. Uh, and we take our stand for God, for faith. At, in his times, Moses could have enjoyed the pleasures of Egypt. Okay, even though he was Hebrew, he had the favor of the palace, but he understood that that's not what he was created for. He understood his destiny. And so he was ready to let go of these pleasures and choose a suffering for the right cause. And uh, that again speaks to us that we can be enjoying the pleasures of this world uh, and be caught up right, in uh, all that the world has to offer. But as believers, as children of God, as Christians, uh, we need to choose godliness, holiness, and uh, live for the greater call of God on our lives. It's going to take faith to do that. Moses did it by faith. And if we are going to do it in our time and age, it's going to take faith to actually stand up for Christ, to be a witness for Christ. And in verse 26, notice, it's speaking about Moses, but there's a mention of Christ. Uh, so all these people, though they lived uh, way beyond, way before the cross, the revelation that they had by the Spirit of God, they knew that someone greater is going to come. Something greater is going to happen. And uh, you know they were living with that expectation of the Christ being manifest. So that is why verse 26, it says, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. So he was a man of faith. And we could even say that his faith was in Christ who would come later and who would be our ultimate deliverer and redeemer. Moving on to verses 27 and 28. 
It says, by faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. So it continues to speak about the stand of Moses. Uh, again, he was not afraid of um, what would transpire you know, if, if he did not side with the Egyptians and the king and his daughter, he was bold enough to uh, embrace his destiny in God and uh, be or become that deliverer for God's people. So that uh, it took faith to make a stand, which we've already been talking about. Secondly, it says, by faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood. So this shows that in what Moses did, we know that you know he observed the Passover before the people left the land of Egypt. So he trusted in God's protection. He trusted in God's uh, covenant. He trusted in the power of the blood okay, of the Passover lamb. Uh, in, in a way, he was also trusting in what Jesus is going to do later on. Okay. But there was faith that he expressed in those actions when he believed God for protection, when he believed God that the firstborn would not die okay, and the plague would not come upon uh, his people uh, and yet judgment will continue on the Egyptians. So that really shows the, mo the faith of Moses. Imagine if Moses did not have that faith, if his belief was that, yes, even the Jewish people are going to die just the way the Egyptians are dying. He would not have taken that step of sprinkling the blood of the Passover lamb, but he did it. Okay? And that shows, his actions show his faith in the deliverance and protection of God. Verse 29, by faith, they pass through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. So now it's talking about the faith of the Israelites. They were standing before the Red Sea. The Red Sea parted. Okay, it's amazing. Just think of those, uh, think of that time when when this would have happened before their eyes. They're looking at the sea uh, whose waters are standing like a wall and they just have to walk through it. As people of God, they knew that God was working on their behalf. And so they crossed through it, right? And we also read that soon after the Egyptians came chasing and they tried crossing through the parted waters. But what happened? The waters, you know, came back in. They caved in on them and they drowned. So Hebrews 11 is telling us why this happened. Why this difference? Why is it that the people of God could walk through a sea, but others could not. What is that uh, element, the key element there is faith. The Israelites walked by faith, and so they crossed their Red Sea. But the Egyptians did not have any faith. Though they could have walked through, but it was not possible because they needed faith. So it also teaches us that in our lives, to cross through our difficulties, to, to cross through um, you know, those seas that are standing in the way, what do, what do we need? We need faith. We need some faith to cross through the Red Sea because faith is that element which made it possible for the Israelites. The Egyptians, see, they could have used the same principles Okay, when, when we study of the many miracles uh, uh, for that God did for the Israelites, the Jericho walls coming down, the Red Sea parting, the Jordan parting, we could look at the signs of it and try to reproduce it. Now, what exactly happened? Uh, was it this? Was it that? The physics, the chemistry? But ultimately, it's a spiritual reality or a spiritual principle that worked, not so much a natural one. And that spiritual reality is the element of faith. So if there is that ingredient, miracles happen. We are able to cross our difficulties, you know, conquer our giants. And uh, that makes a difference. Faith makes a difference in our lives.
Okay, the Egyptians did not have it, and so what happened? They drowned. Let's move on. Verse thirty. Sorry, uh, it's talking about the Jericho walls. It says by faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. As I'm stating, there is a spiritual reality, a spiritual principle, faith. Faith made the walls come down. And so same thing applies for us. Today, if we are standing before maybe some other kind of walls, not the Jericho walls, our Jericho could be anything else. Faith will bring it down. So we need to apply our faith to see these miracles take place. Verse 31, by faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. So it's speaking about a non-Jew, Rahab. She did not have a, a great reputation. But one thing that made a difference for her is the faith that she carried. Even though she did not belong to the Jews, uh, she believed in the God of the Jews. And she asked for favor from the spies and, and said, you know, like, okay, I'll help you out. Uh, and, uh, you know, because you're God, I understand who your God is. I've heard about your God. So her faith was in the God of the Israelites. And she displayed her faith. And because of her faith, what did God do for her? God protected her. Even when the walls came down, God honored the faith of Rahab. And she was protected. And we read uh, so many other things about uh, Rahab. And uh, it, it's a blessing to know that faith could do this in the life of someone who even belonged outside of the covenant back in those days. Okay, uh, So uh, it, it's incredible. But that element is faith. Uh, if we can recall, even in the New Testament, we see that uh, Canaanite woman come to Jesus. You know, and then Jesus says, the bread is only for the children. It's not for the dogs. But her faith was so great. And she expressed her faith. And she said, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs. And Jesus was amazed by her faith and said, woman, you know, I'm so amazed. What great faith you carry. In the New Testament as well as in the Old Testament, what is it that is pleasing God? Remember yesterday we said Hebrews 11, 6, faith pleases God. It was faith that impressed God every time. And Rahab, woman outside the covenant, was protected because of her faith. And faith is that important. Moving on to verse 32. I'll read till verse 35, uh, the first portion of it here. It says, and what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of, he lists out names, Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness, were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead race to life again. So it's just letting us know that if there are these breakthroughs, these conquests, uh, these victories in scripture, it's because people battled in faith. Okay? And there are names listed. And there are many names which are not listed. But all these people walked by faith. And that is how they could do what they did. So it says Gideon. What did Gideon do? You know, Gideon was a very cowardly individual. Uh, and yet God called him you know, a, a valiant man. And through his life and ministry, you know, Midian, he defeated a much larger army of the Midianites. But at the same time, God worked through his life to destroy idols okay some of those those idols uh, that were left behind gideon was that bold man who destroyed it how did he do it he seemed like a very cowardly person but faith and hebrews 11 is telling us you know how gideon did it the man carried faith and so 
the works of the enemy or you know those those symbols of uh, uh, unrighteousness those those idols he was able to destroy by faith during his times um barak barak is another person we read about him in the story of uh, debra in judges chapter 4 uh, and he was a warrior and we see about the dramatic victory of the people of god over the canaanites again the question how did barak do it how did he win that battle against sisera faith so when we are fighting battles in our lives against the enemy you know against the demonic world so we are not uh, talking about you know any uh, fighting against flesh and blood as uh, ephesians chapter 6 says we know our battles our greatest battles are against the principalities and powers of darkness so as we are engaging in spiritual warfare what will bring us that victory you know faith in god faith in the name of jesus faith in who we are in christ faith in the authority that god has given us and these people won their earthly battles okay we too can win our earthly battles spiritual battles by faith so barak won that battle hebrews 11 sheds light that it is through faith it's also talking about samson you know we uh, when uh, and notice not that these people did not have weaknesses right starting from abraham who tried to make it work in a fleshly way the promise of god to sarah who laughed at god's promise to samson who was careless with the call of god on his life these were imperfect people but we do see aspects of their life where they exercised faith and they saw victory through that faith so we 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 are saying that hey we can learn from the good we can take the good right we can also learn lessons from what they did and they should not have done so the highlight here when we speak about samson is about his victory uh and he was the one that the lord worked through to defeat the philistines so excuse me that is the faith victory in the life of samson then there is the mention of jephtha and the story of jephtha from judges 11 uh, speaks about his conquest or victory over or god's defeat of the ammonites so through jephtha god defeated the ammonites how did all these people win their battles by faith so that's uh, an encouragement for us that we will be, win our battles we will win our spiritual enemies through faith uh we go on to reading about david you know david was a was a psalmist uh, a, a worshipper uh, a, a mighty king but at the same time a warrior so there are many things that david did in his life and there's a mention of david here a remarkable man of faith okay did he have his downsides did he have mistakes yes he did but there were accomplishments of faith as well in his life and we are pointing to that and we are saying we can learn from the life of david excuse me and uh, you know the dis- the display of faith uh, in other amazing things that took place things like subduing of kingdoms subduing of kingdoms is overcoming of enemies and taking on regions conquering uh, pieces of land we can see that isn't it we can see joshua uh, he was someone who uh, who led the people in many battles they occupied you know piece by piece the land that was given to them we see david was a warrior they david's battles david's mighty men uh, there are other kings we can speak about you know jehoshaphat hezekiah josiah everyone has their stories about battles and conquering enemies of taking on kingdoms how did they do it they did it by faith and so today we can also do it by faith if there are battles ahead of us we can fight it we can conquer we can overcome we can subdue the enemy through faith and on this side of the cross you know we uh, have been saying that and the book of hebrews tells us we are part of a better covenant better promises we are walking in the authority of christ so we have so much more they subdued we can subdue we can do the greater works of christ because we are part of the new covenant and uh, you no know, faith is that 
marker or that key ingredient that they had in their lives through which they can they could do this so subduing of kingdoms that's how we understand it working of righteousness or the establishing of righteousness we can look at difficult times uh, you know times such as those of elijah when there is uh, ahab and jezebel and uh, the evil powers are thriving but through god's people people like elijah elisha you know god made his himself known the righteousness of god known uh, and the powers of darkness were were overcome right by the works of god so it's just one example but many such uh, circumstances and uh, times when we we see that god's people were victorious you know the times of daniel we could refer to things were hard things were difficult but god's righteousness displayed through his people daniel uh, shadrach meshach abednego the god was able to work out his righteousness through his men uh, joseph you know times of famine times of difficulty but a man of god he used his wisdom uh, interpreter of dreams uh, a great leader Okay. so in this way god is displaying his righteousness his greatness his goodness through his people how did all these people work it out by faith by faith and today we may live in difficult circumstances but the righteousness of god can still be evident it can still be splashed in uh, that you know dark uh, dark, dark uh, situation or circumstance because of us Okay, when we are walking by faith, then obtain promises. What are some of the promises that we see obtained? We see people like um, Caleb. Okay, Caleb is a good example. Uh, he was promised a piece of land, and we know that he waited upon God. He waited for forty years, and he was still full of uh, energy and positivity and hope and faith after forty years to actually receive that land. And we also. Study about him that he was quite uh, well ahead in years, eighty year old, but he still received the promise of God. So if he can receive God's promise, we can receive God's promise. Uh, people like uh, Sarah, Abraham, well past in age, but they had a child because they believed in the promise of God. They obtained the promises of God. So this way, we can look at the lives of many people. How did they get their promises? They stood in faith. So today. God's promises may be over our lives that okay we are going to uh, serve in this manner in the ministry or these breakthroughs will happen in our family uh, you know or we are going to see the power of God manifest in this way so what are those promises or maybe something to do with our career and work uh, how God is going to grant us favor uh, to to uh, be a witness in the marketplace. So whatever promises God has given to us, how are we going to make it happen? Faith. If we let go of faith, we will not walk in any of these promises. So we learn from the example of those who have gone before us. They obtain promises by faith. We will obtain our promises by faith. Then stop the mouths of lions. Uh, a classic example is Daniel. Okay, So amazing that he is in the den of hungry lions. But nothing happened to him. God sent his angels. He shut the mouth of lions. So today for us, I mean, rarely, I don't even know if I've seen a lion actually, like a physical lion, maybe in the zoo when I was a kid. But we're not dealing with real lions around us anymore. But our lion can be something completely different, right? It could be uh, uh, a situation or a circumstance where uh, people are... Um, uh, ganging up against us or uh, accusations the enemy is hurling accusa accusations against us uh, you know he's creating these difficult circumstances at the workplace in the family in the neighborhood so many things happen so that could be our line that we are facing but can we see God stop the mouth of lions of course if Daniel could see it happen with real lions no, God can do it for us. Uh, but we need faith. We need faith and say, okay, God, yes, there are real enemies. Yes, these are tough times. But the God who shut the mouth of lions and protected Daniel will shut the mouth of my lions and protect me. And he'll bring me out of this lion's den. 
No? So this is the kind of faith that we exercise. We learn from people who have had these, uh, you know, who've, who've come out of these circumstances. Let's move on. So shut the mouth of lions, quench the violence of fire. Who's that? Violence of fire. Anyone? Who went into the fire? Exactly. Shadrach, Mishak, Abednego. Uh, and we read that they came out without the smell of fire, the Bible says. So can we go through some fiery, fiery trials and come out without even the, the smell of fire? Like nobody even knows you went through it and you came out of it. Okay. It's possible. How did they do it? They had faith in their God. And God is saying, it'll work for us today. If their faith did not scorch them in the fiery furnace. Okay, it's amazing. I, I really don't know what we would have done had we seen these things like with our natural eyes, had we been in those times, right? Incredible, incredible. How is it that these men did not get scorched? And God is saying they did it by faith. We can do it by faith. Okay, come out of trials of life. Okay, we know that the Bible says persecution is one of those trials. That uh, if people ill-treated Jesus, if they spoke all kinds of things about our master, obviously they will do that about his disciples. So we all go through some form of opposition, difficulty when we are living for Christ, persecution. But God is saying those fiery trials, don't be afraid. It will not scorch you. You will come out of it victorious you'll be a witness okay so we can do that by faith escape the sword of escape the edge of the sword uh examples like you know david escaped david escaped goliath david escaped saul when he tried to attack him moses escaped pharaoh uh the the israelites escaped the egyptians uh elijah escaped jezebel okay so a rescue they were able to experience a rescue uh, in, in a time where they thought that they'll be taken. So can we experience that? You know, the nick of the moment, uh, favor of God comes and just rescues us, delivers us. Like how we saw, right? Acts 16, we saw uh, Paul and Silas worshipping and the prison doors are open uh, and they, they see the deliverance of God. We can. We can. Faith worked then faith will work now we can escape those uh, you know those those moments of uh, threat and danger and we're also told out of weakness were made strong a wonderful example is sarah she she was weak in that her body could not bear a child at that age but what do what did we read earlier sarah received strength by faith sarah received strength to conceive a child okay so she was weak but the faith made her strong. So today, in our circumstances, Gideon, you know, he never thought he could, he could be a warrior for God. But he became a warrior for God. And he is in Hebrews chapter 11. So you know how amazing is that? Weak people, Esther, an orphan who had nothing going for her, God elevated her. Suddenly, she comes on, you know, the, the national scene. And uh, she becomes the... the instrument that God uses for deliverance for her entire nation, you know, her people. How is this happening? The weak are made strong because of faith in God, of faith in God. So today we may sense that, yeah, I'm actually not that strong God and you're calling me to do this, but don't worry. By faith, our weaknesses will be transformed into the strength of God. And that is the faith that we must carry. Became valiant in battle. About battle, we've seen a lot. So all the men of God, women of God, who were victorious in battle, how did they do it? By faith. And then it says, women who receive their dead race to life. Who are these women? We uh, particularly see one story uh, where uh, a prophet of God ministers and the widow of Zarephath. Okay, and uh, we we find that God is able to do such a miracle, right, in her her life. Uh, 
just one second. Is it the widow of Zarephath or the Shunammite? I'll just quickly check. I keep getting confused between them. Yeah, raising the son of the widow of Zarephath. So it happened. How did she get her dead son back by faith? So the raising of the dead by faith. So now let's see the last section here. Uh, and it's very interesting. So far, we talked about victory. We talked about overcoming, coming out, uh, huh? conquering, okay. and, and all of that. Uh, but we, we are going to see something uh, slightly different in the okay. last portion here. Uh, from verse 35, the second half of that I'm going to read. It says, others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheep skins and goat skins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Verse 38, of whom the world was not worthy, they wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. Okay, let me also read 39 and 40. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us, and they should not be made perfect apart from us. So we have this question. Like, what exactly is happening? Just now we talked of all these mighty things that God did, Red Sea, Jordan, Jericho. Now we are reading about people who did not escape. They were tortured. They did not get delivered. Okay, uh, They were mocked. Or they experienced scourgings or they were beaten. They were in chains, in prison. Think about Paul. Right? We read martyred. Many of the disciples of Jesus martyred. Okay, Why? Why? How? If they were supposed to come out of it every time, uh, but they, they actually uh, succumbed to that persecution. They are also listed here. So the question, why is God including those people who, do, who did not make it out? It says, sawn in two. Okay, sawn into people who are sawn into what is the victory in them dying like that? Okay, we're slain with the sword. Many prophets of, of uh, God at the time of Elijah were murdered. What about them? Were they not men of God? Were they not people of God? But they died, right? We, we see in the book of Acts, Herod, right? Uh, he kills one James and then he's after Peter. But thank God, you know, Peter escapes. But why did James die? We have all these questions. However, what God is saying is, you see, there can be times in our lives where we don't see victory the way we want to. But even those who have been through trials and have not come out of it, God is proud of them. The fact that they lived by faith and they died by faith makes God proud. Why did they die? Why didn't they escape? We can ask all these questions. But what is God saying? I'm proud of them because their life was a life of faith. They may not have, uh, you know, seen the Red Sea part or they may not have uh, come out, escaped death. They died. Stephen, he died. Lived by faith, died by faith. See, even when our victory doesn't sound like uh, you know, what we saw earlier, what counts for God? A life of faith. Okay? A life of faith. Sometimes we can't explain why did this happen? Uh, this person is such a person of faith. Why did this happen to them? We don't have explanations for many of these questions. But is God happy with them? Is God pleased with their life? Yes. When they are people of, they are people of faith, God is so happy. Otherwise, we would not have put them. He would not have put them in Hebrews chapter 11, right? And what, what is the verse 39 saying? Having obtained good testimony. Where is the good testimony? 
these people died they were put to the sword they were sawn into you know they were wandering about the good testimony is whatever they went through they carried faith in their hearts that is the good testimony not so much about only the result or the outcome okay that also we have to remember uh, and uh, so god is still proud when we don't see the outcome the, the way we wish for the outcome to be uh, and this is the good testimony through faith and they did not receive the promise some of them did not receive the promise think about abraham you know it is said that god promised him all these dimensions of land but literally he lived in tents and he lived in tents with his uh, children his descendants ultimately he never he never occupied that land his descendants did many years later hundreds of years later but he didn't but he's a man of faith because he believed god that it is going to happen okay so it's not just the results sometimes and even then what matters is our life of faith so be strong in god believe god live by faith not just by the results was 40 god having provided something better for us that they should not be made perfect apart from us and that simply states that you know there's a way that god integrates uh, many stories somehow their story is connected to the stories of their descendants and uh, uh, it's connected to us in some way you know they were the uh, torch bearers and now we are taking things forward so there are all these connections that are happening um, and uh, many things that people dreamt about god is actually doing it now you know things like uh, under the new covenant the holy spirit dwelling inside every believer these things were amazing for the people of the old testament but today we are living in those times and so we need to do our part you know and fully have faith in what jesus says and you shall do greater things than these so faith is what matters and faith is what we must live by um i'm going to stop here so we've uh, gone through hebrews 11 if there are any points of discussion we could please uh, take that up i'm coming here to the chat and uh, jafina has posted from which he also received him in a figurative sense what is the meaning of this phrase so it's by faith jafina uh you know in our thoughts sometimes we think what if this happens so in abraham's mind he would have thought that okay tomorrow morning i'm taking isaac and uh, i will sacrifice him but in abraham's mind he would have also thought okay i i sacrifice isaac and god has raised him from the dead it settled in his heart that way yeah in his mind basically or in his heart you may want to call it okay okay if you have nothing to say i will say one thing and we will close the class <laughs> have faith in god okay have faith in god and that's what god is trying to tell us in so many different ways okay let's close with a word of prayer um i invite any one of our students to please pray and then we will close the class Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you under the name of Jesus. I thank you for this day. Thank you for the class that we had. And God, uh, help us to uh, realize the truth, Jesus, uh, to accept it and to walk in faith. What a privilege it is to be your sons and daughters. And God, what are the greater things that we can do in this life, God, with faith. And God, I pray that Jesus... that we won't just listen to it for the sake of the cause but but we will apply it in our life and god we will do mighty things for your kingdom we'll be those people who walk in faith jesus who walk in the light of the lord who walk uh, in faith every single day of our life jesus so that uh, we can please you we can glorify you we can lift your name above everything else we give you all the glory and honor in jesus name i pray
Amen. 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 Thank you, Jafina. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Uh, have a great week ahead. Bye for now.